All right, so here's another part for the suburban fuel tank. I guess I missed this part on the revised video. For the opening, whatever you decide to do, whether to have it on the driver's side or have it on the passenger side, either way, you're cutting out the section from there and then transferring it back here. Uh, that's going to be the easiest way to do it unless you want to make all of this assembly. Mine, I cut it out uh, probably a couple inches out from the edge of this. So this whole piece is all from up there. And then I just use sheet metal to fill in the hole that I cut out. So this section, like I said, whether you you want the fuel tank filler to be on the passenger or driver's side, you would just use whatever side you wanted it to do. But welded in there, uh, so that gives you your door. Uh, the plastic piece would be, I use passenger side, so you have to use the passenger side. Filler neck is a suburban one, or you could probably use a blazer filler neck, whether it, if you have a short bed or a long bed. You're still going to need a blazer or a suburban filler neck for it but you just use all the factory pieces so once you decide where you want it to go like mine is pretty much lined up with the tail light so following it over i just kind of matched it where i wanted it to go and then kind of looking at a suburban see how a suburban has it mounted so once you have that welded in there you got your filler neck in there you have to cut an opening for it. It's gonna be the easiest way to get in here. So that's how I did my opening. Uh, pretty much just made a square for it. Not exactly perfect, but you know, it's close enough. And then round off the corners. That way you don't have any cracks, so it's not just a straight corner. Make them rounded or else it'll start to crack upward. And then it's just kind of clearanced. It's a little bit bigger than what it needs to be. I mean, it could be smaller, but I just went with it like that. Uh, the biggest thing is that this plastic piece, you see it sticks past, so either way you're going to have to have a decent opening on it. And then you got the vent for the filler. You're going to have to weld a tab onto your filler neck for a ground. Uh, that way you don't have static electric when you're filling it up. So mine, I just took a piece of metal, cut it, shaped it to fit a female connector, and plugged it on there. I still got to clean it up, and then I'll make it so it doesn't get all rusted. Same thing on the floor cut it uh, I just started out small and got bigger and bigger enough to where I could get this angle to fit in there and not hit the bed the only other thing I have to do is I still have to make a cover which I'll probably end up just using sheet metal to run a downward cover and two sides on it I'll weld it together and just have it bolted to the floor so it'll kind of look factory that way nothing falls and hits it not like anything goes into bed anyways, but it kind of shows you the kind of opening that I did for it. But you really can't tell. I mean, it's out of the way. Even if you have a lower truck, uh, putting sheets of plywood, all that, it's still out of the way. So I don't see it being an issue, even if you want to use it on a regular two-wheel drive truck. I'd rather have, even on a two-wheel drive, I'd rather have the fuel tank between the frame rails in the back with the weight over the axle versus the fuel tanks on the outside of the frame exposed to getting hit by the hit in the side and busting one of the tanks. So it's an easy way to do it. Uh, the fuel tank is flippable, so you can put the filler neck on the driver's side or passenger side, whichever one you want to do. The filler neck is right there. 
a little bit more into the other video of how all this goes together. I just wanted to show the opening for your fuel tank for filling it up. So that's how I did it on mine. That's it.